Hello, welcome to the World Cafe Podcast. This podcast has been designed with curated content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobwe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. Wonderful. How are you all doing? Beautiful, I believe. I'm doing fine. Great, 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 great. Good to be back, you know, into the space. You know how we say it when we come into the space. This is where we come to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path. That is what the Word Cafe is all about. We just come in like, you know, we're grabbing a cup of coffee or something and all that. And we're just talking and, you know, sharing moments and encouraging one another. So what do we have today? You're seeing it on the screen. The biology princess. Ah, yes. First of all, it's a lady that I'm bringing on the set. And you're wondering, what has biology got to do with the Word Cafe? Well, this individual is somebody who has embraced, you know, her, would I say, her life's purpose within the space of, yes, academia, as in she loves books, she loves reading, she, she, she loves creating. We, we could call her, you know, some, within the space of Watson and Creek, if you know that name, those that elucidated the DNA structure, she's somebody like that, you know, and amazing story she has. And honestly, I just told myself, I can't help it but to bring her here for her to share her story with us enough of my talking i want to see her like you want to see her her name is wamaka akodiete that is dr wamaka akodiete let me bring her on now and where is she there she is (laughs) hi amaka hi hi how are you i'm good i'm fine Welcome to the World Cafe Live Show. So, I mean, you're wondering who 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 is this guy talking about? Is he talking about me? Well, <laughs> all right, you're welcome. So, what's it like where you are? What's it like? What's the weather like? It's summer. It's today is is okay. Not too hot. Not too cold. But we've right. been having the heat wave in the past week. But it's That's cold the UK. Today. That's the, yes, the UK in the UK. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Well, it's well. I think they call it climate change and all that, but we're going to adapt. So, who is this one, Maka Akwadiete? Who is she? Let's get to meet her. Okay. Um, one Maka is a girl who loves Jesus exclusively. I'm a wife, a mother of three children. I'm somebody's daughter, I'm a sister, and I'm a friend to a few people. (laughs) Um, Primarily, I'm also a medical and molecular entomologist. Now, that's the fancy way of describing somebody. I like that word, or that's that line. Medical and? Molecular entomologist. Oh, please break it down for us. Yes, that's just a fancy word for describing somebody who studies uh, medically important insects using cutting edge technology in molecular biology. Whoa. Yeah. So when you say medi- when you say medically important insects, you insects, know, somebody yeah. hearing that were like, I don't get you. You mean we have insects that are medically important, as in they have economic value. Can, can, you, can you just expatiate on that? So they are medically important because they transmit diseases to like Mm. your mosquitoes, which are the main focus of my work. They are very important because they transmit malaria. For instance, that's just one of the the diseases mosquitoes transmit. And malaria... They they have other diseases they transmit too, apart from malaria. Yeah, a host of other diseases, depending on the mosquito species. And this kills 
about 0.5 million people around the world mm. every year according to the WHO so that makes them really important beautiful so in a nutshell somebody will look at you and say why would such a beautiful lady go do something that is quote and quote embrace something that is boring as it were tell us why molecular biology ah well <laughs> uh, why biology now god orchestrated my entrance into biology through the um admission systems in nigeria that's candid mm-hmm. um so that was me from secondary school wanting to study medicine and I got mm-hmm. into animal and environmental biology via basic but that turned out to be a blessing great blessing mm-hmm. I'll talk about that on this firm in AB the the game plan for me was to get a high CGPA um in year 1 and then switch to medicine Mm. But then I met inspirational teachers. Inspirational teachers. My department was blessed, is still blessed with great teachers like mm. the late professor Emeritus Okiwelu, like mm. professor Lalu, the outgoing uh, vice chancellor Dr. Dr. Nucha and Dukata. All of them they were inspirational. That's, they got me as you said as uni, Uniport, correct? in University of Port Harcourt AB department exactly. these guys right. got me interested in biology so much so that when i finished my first degree that was all i wanted to do really mm-hmm. and a particular mention for me somebody who really shone the light for me was the, the first guy i called his name he's late now he died last year mm-hmm. he was a selfless teacher he was like a beacon of of light this man had a flair for teaching he i just give a quick example he would organize um, what we call like um an mcq so he mm. would line up 50 insects in the lab yeah. and then have us go pass through them and then come back and ex- and want us to 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 give like a full repertoire a report of all we observe so he made the cause to come alive and so i stopped seeing spiders arachnids and cockroaches i started seeing this insect as things that had um, that were important i started mm. seeing them in the light of you know their food chain in the light of how they interacted with the human host or animal mm. host and he made all of that come alive you know wow. we nigeria is a society where there are few courses that are projected you know few mm. options and yeah. so when you go to secondary school you either want to be a doctor or an engineer or an accountant mm. but these guys opened the world of opportunities they showed me that there was so much i could be there were so many streams there were so many options there were so many mm. issues that you know i could apply myself to and make a success out of it and you know that was it when i finished um, um i finished at the top of my class i was a bgs okay 2008 sets you know when i came back home my mom asked me okay so are we going back to do medicine i'm like nah i'm just going to give myself one year of youth service to think about that and by the mm-hmm. end of youth service i had gotten a master's form in uniben to to go on studying biology mm-hmm. you know so so basically i got into biology accidentally okay, okay. not intentionally but i'm grateful for mentors i'm grateful for teachers who understood their role you know that they were bridges they were yeah in lights and they lighted the path for me and Beautiful. for me i know that god placed them in my path god awesome. placed these teachers in my path and my story i mean anyway i talk about anything i'm doing i have to talk about mm. my teachers because they were 
really instrumental where I sat. You know, I'm in the UK now, and you know, mm-hmm. if you interact with um, um, kids in secondary school, they know so much. They know the range of options available to them. We have right. students coming from secondary school coming into study zoology. They they chose it, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. they were aware that that was an option. Students come to study um, anatomy. They come to study uh, music by choice. You yeah. know, they were not doubled into it because yeah. the plethora of opportunities are open to them, and so they can ask themselves, you know, what speaks to them, and they go ahead to study. So for me, that's how I got into bi- uh, into biology. I came in yeah, accidentally. Cool. But then I met role models. In fact, I was mm. so captivated back then in NIFES, uh, Nigeria Fellowship of Evangelical Students. Evangelical students. I people who thought I was studying medicine, really because of the way I was reading, studying, you know. And a lot of my friends, anybody who knew me, knew a lot about zoology because I started mm. telling them how broad it is. You know, even then I had lots of conversations with Eto. And I'll be like, you see, the medical people, they are studying just one species. Mm-hmm. But in, in, in zoology, we are studying thousands of species of animals. Mm. You know, I started to feel like an academic back from undergraduates. That was okay. a testament to the quality of teachers that I had. They were really great. And I'm grateful. Beautiful. To L- L- listening to you now, what I, what I hear you say is, I got into this accidentally, but in that, should I say, space, I became intentional with the help of teachers. And that's 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 amazing, you know, when we somewhat disregard the roles of teachers, you know, they they, 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 they are like gatekeepers, not like, they are gatekeepers. And when they see potentials and they see that this person, this is what I see in this person, they kind of invest themselves you know into that person and that's what i hear you say you know the roles of teachers in guiding and forming and helping us identify who we really are and i mean where we're going so so beautiful now in discovering yourself you know what has it been like your challenges within this uh environment over this should I say 10 plus years in practicing what you're practicing I mean doing now can you share with us your challenges hmm. challenges um... <laughs> I don't know what to say no because uh, the challenges have been building blocks so okay. um academia is challenging okay mm-hmm. i think um i'll just flow like this just let me flow okay i'll go probably ahead. talk about the, yeah go challenge. Ahead. so go, go, post go graduation <laughs> post graduation i realized several things about myself i realized at the end of my undergrad that i had a very strong appetite for research Mm-hmm. Right, and that led me to, like, like I had mentioned, picking up a master's form during my youth service from mm-hmm. Uniben, and I did a master's there. Whilst I was doing that program, um, I came to Uniport to collect my transcript, and um, I saw an advert for a job at the University of Harcourt, and I picked mm-hmm. it up, you know, and indicated interest to my department. And then again, these teachers, people I don't know from Adam, you mm. know, they thought, especially this guy I talked about, who is now late, is is I'll just call him my academic father. He thought as though he knew me from anywhere. He thought so much to make sure I got an interview, the interview went well, and then there was all the back and forth with the university and tribal mm. sentiment. And mm. then he thought a lot more. And then I got into that system. So now that was supposed to be a challenge, getting a job mm-hmm. after you mm-hmm. But then God had placed men. Okay, he had placed men in my path. And, you know, of course, there was the aspect of me preparing for the interview, 
um, publishing uh, my work, getting on with my master's program, or the burden was not on me because God had sent help. Now, something else I'd like to point out is during the space of my um, academic life, from masters, I did two masters, by the way, at the same time, mm. because while I was in Uniben, I got on this job in Unisports, and it was a specialist role, so I needed to do another masters for that job, okay. and so I started on it, and then mm. I didn't want to waste the time I had spent with the previous one in Uniben, so I was doing a masters in Uniports and another masters in, 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 in Uniben, and I had a day. I'm let me understand. Let, let me understand <laughs> what you're saying. It's like you are you're operating in alternate universe now. You are in, you're, you're doing masters in Uniben, that's University of uh, Benin, and you're doing another yeah. at, at University of Port Harcourt at the same time. Yes. I don't understand. Yeah. How did how did you combine that? And you had the child. I mean, by that period, I, I believe you were you got married and you had a child also. Oh yes. Yes, so I had a baby, little baby. The balancing <laughs> act. I, w- I want to hear the balancing act. Go ahead. Exactly, yeah. So, um, being a woman in science, in academia, that is something that um, you would have to deal with. It's one challenge you have to deal with. But mm. I think for me, the the key thing is, one, well, like I said, God placed me in the right environment. I had the right people. I couldn't overemphasizing really i had people god god has blessed me with people you know so they understood i i told them what was going on in fact they knew i was in uniben already before the job came so they knew i had that going on and they gave the permission so that was the first step i got the approval to do both at the same time of course i was allowed to travel when i needed to but it was grinding work like Mm -hmm. I um, th- there are so many things I still having time for recently. I recently joined Instagram. Mm. I am really on Facebook. Mm. I may not know any social gathering or mm. my life has been triangular for a very long time. You know, church, book, family, church, book, family. So it could be a lonely space to be in. But the good side is in that academic world, too, there is a whole community. Yeah. So most people on my phone list are vice chancellors, professors. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there is that you have your own community, yeah. but it will be different from those of your contemporaries. So you may not be in the same circles as everybody around you. But it's a beautiful com- community, you know. The academic community com- com- community is such that it's um, altruistic. Mm. It's it's an altruistic community. What I mean by that is that academia is a field where you put in so much intellectually, your time, your efforts, and in Nigeria, really mm. your resources, and the pay is not commensurate. It's small, so. Mm. What keeps people in there is the passion for the subject, mm. mm-hmm. that community, that impact you're making. For instance, yeah. today there is the malaria vaccine. So yeah. the, the, the academia may not retire with so much money in their bank accounts, an academic person, but they mm-hmm. retire with a legacy. They retire with a backlog of um, impacts, you know, things you have problems you have solved, things yeah. you have helped um, diminish, things you have helped, mm. um, the bridges you have built, really. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's a whole community of its own. Yeah. Okay, talking about challenges too, in the midst of all of that, um, I went on to do a PhD. So I was in Uniport and it was great. I had great community. It was a great job, secured um, mm. job. But I wanted more, okay? Um, I wanted more out of life. And uh, truthfully, God uh, placed a desire in my heart for more. I've always 
being a Christian who wants to maximize Calvary. Mm. Everything that God has in store for me, I want to be that. Mm. And I'm also grateful to have a husband who is more ambitious than I am of mm. my future. My, my husband is like, uh, so that I'm like, relax. I've tried, as in, here I am. Let's just give glory to God. Well, mm. I know, like, after like one year, he has stayed stoking fires. And I'm like, okay, so what about this? What about that? What about this? So let me just. So he doesn't let me. Um, I call it. Relax or to say, okay, this is great. You know, mm. I mean, being a lecturer in, in, in Uniport would have been wonderful. You know, I would take care of my kids have a steady income teach my yeah. students that would have been fine but god keeps um, putting that urge that um, mm. vision i'll call it that there yeah. is more Beautiful. and primarily to to be honest um the time i was a bit uncomfortable with the time that it takes to complete a degree in nigeria for instance, mm. currently we are on strike and um, um, research. I looked at my mentors, and they are very dedicated people, yeah. the lecturers that I I work with. But mm. you see them towards retirement. There's a lot they wish they could do that they're not able to do because mm-hmm. of the the limits uh, our society is limited. Um, I'm yeah. sorry to say that, but that's the truth. You know, and you know, you don't have to be. Changed. You don't have to be yeah. sorry. That's the truth. A lot of limitations. Yeah. So I didn't want to be limited, and so I pushed ahead and stayed applying for scholarship in 2013. Mm. I applied for about 50 to 60. Mm. I just kept sending applications, sending, sending, sending around, sending around, and two came through. Two came through. And I want to talk talk, talk about one because I think it might help somebody out there. Go ahead. Um, I got a scholarship with um, Shlom Beje. That's um, okay. an oil sector Shlom. company. That I, yeah. I know they have a presence in mm. Nigeria. Yeah. And they are, I mean, this is an engineering firm. They are basically they're basically calling for STEM, you know, science, technology, mm. engineering, and math. Yeah. You know, I read through everything they had there, and it looked as though I didn't fit in. You know, biology, entomology, mosquitoes. Where does it fit in? I was going to push it aside, and the Holy Spirit told me, "Wait a minute, you know, pick it up again." I picked it up again, and He began to show me how my project, my research mm. project fit into what they were doing. Mm. Okay. And I started yeah. looking at, you know, the how the environmental changes in Nigeria, in our waterways. Yeah. You know, we yeah. have lots of stagnant waterways because mm-hmm. of proper well, management of waste. How mm. all of that man-made changes creates more habitat for these mosquitoes you know they are immature yeah. stages in water yeah you know and i pushed with that story in fact they were very excited i think that was like i was one of their first um entomologists you know i checked through mm. their historical um, awards i was like one of the first people they gave an award in entomology because that's not really their field mm. you know, but God showed me how it fits in, you know, and I put that together, got interviewed and, you know, it came through, you know, so Beautiful. when I tell people that, ah, I'm a Slumberger fellow, it's like, how, how did you, <laughs> Slumberger oil company, mosquitoes, how, how mm. does that fit in? Mm. But then that, that is a testimony or um, being led by God's spirit being yeah. yielded, allowing yourself to, you know, when the Holy Spirit possesses you, mm-hmm. you become another person. Yeah. Like your thoughts, you think his thoughts, God cannot pick up anything. There is no 
situation. There's nothing God picks up and he can't handle or he can't open up or yeah. there is no riddle God, God cannot solve. So true. when you approach life, uh, God has helped me to approach my academics in that way. I, I'm going to keep talking, talking about God, 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 because I received immense help. You know, I have, what I see about my story is that God placed me in an obscure field, mm-hmm. okay, a field that is not um, out there. And then the light of God in me is lighting it up. Beautiful. You 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 um, you just you just said something now that will uh, I'll break you, I'll stop you there for a bit because I know you are just excited you know the way you are talking if I let you you just keep talking and it's not a problem about that I'm enjoying every bit of your story you know but you 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 just described for a minute someone who who believes in deep work what we describe as deep work. You know, you're not there like on social media. These things are not sexy as we call them. You know, you 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 are always within. You know, you're in that cocoon. You're building. You're building. You're building. You're building. But one stroke that you give out there is like we have a million stars. They're just brightening up the whole room and all that. That is what you just, I mean, described about yourself, and that's what I am seeing when you said God took you into that somewhat obscured environment so that he could unearth your light in that environment and also let people see the beauty in this obscurity it's like calling light out of darkness you know just like what we read in Genesis about the creation calling light out of the dark that's what I just see there and it is beautiful amazing journey you you've had I mean all these years now enough of the challenges can we hear your success story as in one thing you, <laughs> when, when, when you sit down and you close your eyes and you think about how this happened i, I mean it gives you this mm, butterfly in your tummy kind of feeling stay with us we'll be right back hello nerds come listen to the history nerds united podcast and let's make history fun again We interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds. Uh, okay, I'm going to highlight a few, but I think it's the entire journey from okay. being here today, talking to mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. and you know, the reason why is that to some extent, God has put glory on my life. So, success mm-hmm. story I told you I was BGS mm-hmm. in my undergrad, best yeah. graduating student. That was high for me. I got to shake President Good Luck, Ebele Jonathan. By the did way, he's an, did you an alumni. Your, did you wash your hands after <laughs> then? <laughs> By the way, he's an alumni from my department. Do you know that? I, I know, I know, I know. I know oh, that story. Great. So, shaking him was wonderful. So that, that's yeah. one. I, yeah. I got two scholarships to do my PhD. That's a success story. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I did my PhD. I had two babies in the course of my PhD, and I finished it in good time. And awesome. before the ink could dry up on my PhD, I got a job, mm. a great job, competitive mm. job here in the in the UK. Again, mm. another tweet uh, about God's uh, God's ways. Mm. It's not something you could stay back. 10 years ago to see that mm. I'll be working in a, in Kew University, United Kingdom as mm-hmm. a research associate in the mm-hmm. UK training, mm-hmm. I train 
um, researchers in six African countries. Hmm. You, I, 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 I hold um, biostats classes where I train. This is from six African countries. Now, this is not something you can see. It's not something you can dream because there's really no textbook. There is no yeah. template. It's just as I kept working with God and believing and working hard at every point. So it's like um, what happens to you when you climb a tree. You know, mm-hmm. if you are if you're on the ground and you move um, two feet higher your view is different you move more the view is different when you get to the top of the skyscraper mm. your view is so different from yeah you know when you when you are down there yeah um another success story really is my family i've got three kids mm. Um, there is this thing about women in academia. It looks as though it has to be an opportunity cost, mm. you know, for you to become a professor or a known academic person. You probably yeah. will not have a family, or I mean, there has to be something missing. But mm. for me, and I'll say it's primarily because of the grace of God really, and the people that played in my life. I, I do have it all. Yeah, I do have it all. Why do I say so? First of all, I have him. And I have the other things that my heart wants. I have my kids. I have my husband. I have my family. God is teaching me every day how to balance. I have my ministry, which is very Mm. dear to my heart. I have opportunities. In fact, that's something that I find exciting, that he's teaching me to see the platforms that he gives to me as opportunities, you know, for mm-hmm. the gospel. I mean, yeah. recently I sat in the same space with a global acclaimed footballer and I was mm. talking about mosquitoes. You know, these mm. are not things I saw. It's not something you say, okay, I have five year goal or whatever, whatever, I'll become this. It's just yeah. basically being dead to the Holy Spirit and pushing and making every day count. I remember yeah. at some point in my PhD when I was writing up, there was one word the Holy Spirit gave to me. There was a point that was really, really difficult. My last chapter, my um, the person that was guiding me through the work, it wasn't his specialty. We had to mm-hmm. depend on somebody somewhere um, outside of the institution. So that bit was a bit challenging. But I would sit back and I would pray about it and the Holy Spirit will tell me, keep making progress. Like, yeah. keep making progress. Keep make, keep pushing from one step to the other. And I write to, up to a point where, you know, he will just open up, you know, something that looks so intricate and complex. Mm. He will just open it up like a flash in my mm. mind. And I'll quickly just begin to type or just so mm. I don't lose the flow of that yeah. understanding. You yeah. know, God has really been there. And for, 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 for me, that's, those are my success stories. Beautiful. You, know, um, you would call me um, an emerging science leader. Mm. I have about seven publications that have been cited. Um, mm. I have a PhD student. Mm. And I'm 36. <laughs> So the future is <laughs> the future Beautiful. is bright. I mean, your 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 story is so inspiring, as an in inspiring. You, you kept on repeating those words. He led me. He led me. Clearly showing where your strength lies. It, it, it doesn't lie in your intelligence. It doesn't lie in your brain as it were but i mean it's with him him here is god you just rely on him and he has led you in so many amazing ways bringing you to places that seemingly seemingly if you if they allow you to like okay get there yourself it would be impossible and all on the back of mosquito Mm, yeah (laughs) 
she you understand <laughs> all on the back of mosquito something that is the bible, so, tri- the bible so is trivial yeah. my story is more like the bible will say that's why excellency is of god he is chooses god. the the foolish things so that the excellency will be of him and by the way mosquito is not trivial guys we've been discussing with wamaka akodiete she is a doctor for your information don't mind me calling her that way you know we've been talking about her success story challenges within the sphere of uh you know the academia and uh, i call her the biology princess you know she's into molecular biology and what have you and you will agree with me listening to her story it is amazing so inspiring showing you that god can take those things that seemingly are obscured you know and throw light to the world for us to see that yes these things also matter amazing i know you are very busy you're taking this time out to come do this with us and we are great 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 so grateful but i have one last question for you before i let you go when you look at what you're doing presently and uh what we have in our society what do you have to say to encourage the young girl out there i am particular about mm-hmm. that what do you have to say okay so um first thing is believe in yourself okay yeah seek mentors so you you've heard my story mhm but say all over again I'm going to say the way I've said it. Mentorship mm. was key to my success story. Mm. I've had great mentors. And I'm doing my bit really for the next uh, generation. I'm also into mentoring. Mm-hmm. I work with some um, secondary school pupils here in the UK. There's Beautiful. this um, club where we're trying to bridge the gap um, from disadvantaged communities to, to get mm. them into school like Oxford and Cambridge. Mm. You know, I do a lot of work with that. So mentorship is key. People need to see, you know, from where you are, see an image of who you could become. Yeah. That really helps. Because Beautiful. if you can't see it, the likelihood of becoming it is very difficult. But once you can see, once you can visualize Mm. you know that possibility then the the rate of success is very high beautiful and of course the um, hard work hard work um the the slay queen of today really should be queens that slay with their brains mm. um, if, you, if you read through scriptures the bible is clear that male female he made them in his image image so God has made you with loads of potentials. So you've got to believe in yourself, apply yourself to those mm. gifting and talents mm. that God mm. has, you know, for you. And another thing I'll add to it is as a lady, a Christian lady, it's also important who you get married to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um incompatibility if you, you get married to somebody who cannot see who is not seen where the vision is not similar mm. the likelihood of your dream being drowned or god's purpose for your life being drowned is very high yeah so you mean if you're not married yet it's important that you seek the lord and insist really mm. on getting married to somebody whose vision you share and who can see um the hand of god in your life because truly the hand of god is on the lives of all of his children there yeah. is no child of god that god doesn't have a purpose for it may be different from mine the next person but i am 100% sure that god has a different plan for your life god wants to use your life for something and mm. most times when we see what he does in scriptures the purpose for our lives is beyond ourselves yeah. it's beyond um, the things you can do for yourself 
God usually puts a mandate for your life or things that mm. only He can only He can help you walk into. You True. Know? And so you have to make sure your spouse is in that light. And then lastly, having the Holy Ghost residence in you as a God, mm. a Christian mm. or a young person, is the most powerful thing on earth. Somebody who is yielded to the Holy Ghost is unstoppable, really. Yeah. I, there are no closed doors. Mm. No closed doors. Once, once I arrive at the door, God is going to show me where the key is. I have walked yeah. into things that people have thought is, it's not for you, it's not for them, it's not for people mm. that look like you. Okay, so beyond being a woman thriving in academia in the UK, you see, I'm black, I'm carrying dreads. That's mm. usually a challenge beyond your sex. So, mm. but not with the Holy Ghost, not with the Holy Ghost, really. When you have him in you, every barriers go down and you get to live the miraculous. You get to live at your optimum you get to do and be all that he wants you to be Beautiful. um i know it is not what you asked but i said on this forum that i'm going to be thanking certain people i've talked about yeah, my cool. teachers yeah, go on. i'm going to thank you to um mentors mm. On the spiritual side of things, I I, yeah. I remember people like um, um, Daddy Vic, you know. Yep. Remember people like Pastor Seal, yep. who God used. These men, I I, I call these two particularly because God used them, especially Pastor Steel, to call mm. for, you know, they. They help me see these things mm. I'm talking about in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. They help me see who I was, you know. They put like the mirror of God's word in front of me. Yeah. You know, see it. See, see who you are. See who you can become. Mm. You know, and God helped me to translate that, to, to, to take that understanding to my career and apply it, you know, Beautiful. in it. So I want to thank them. And lastly, I want to thank my parents. I come from what you call a regular, average, working family background. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Neither of my parents have university education, but they were very particular. They were hardworking people and they had a vision, particularly my mom. My mom wanted so much for us and she worked so hard, so hard mm-hmm. to ensure that you know, we would not be limited by the things that limited her. And I am grateful to them, you know, for giving me a better life than, you know, we had. Beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful, guys. You, 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 you will agree with me. This is appreciation. Somebody coming to say thank you to people who have God has used in so many ways in shaping, directing, leading her into her destiny and fulfilling purpose. Amazing. She's not in any way ungrateful, but grateful, you know, and honestly, I just love this. You know, when when she said the slay queens of today should be those who are slaying with their brains, whoa, mic dropping statement if i must say so it's not enough you want to be a slay queen but listen you can use your brain to slay amazing thank you so much guys i am so grateful having dr wamaka akodiete with us in the studio today to share her story i know this story will inspire so many out there you know but we have to go you know what it's like you know whenever we come into this space we don't know where time goes. Somehow, we, time just disappears because we just want to continue. Yeah. Talk, I mean, talking and talking and talking. But thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And we, we want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to your immediate family, your husband and your children. You know, when I got in touch with him to like 
uh, where is your wife? I need I need her to come on this show. He was like, mm, I'll make it happen. And somehow, I mean, we're here. I'm grateful. Tell him a very big thank you for me. I appreciate this moment. Mm, but we have to go now. Guys, you know how we say it. When we come into this space, we come to lean on one another's experience and forge a positive path till we come your way again. Bye for now. Maka, what do you have to say? Um, it's been lovely to be here. So live your best life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh yeah, beautiful. Before we sign off, I just want to encourage you. Yeah, it's been a wonderful time. And also, I'd like to hear from you your feedback. You know, you've been listening to the World Cafe podcast. I would love to hear from you the feedback. If you have any questions, yeah, you go ahead and ask those questions. You can reach me at my email address, amakri at gmail.com. Amakri is A M A C H R O D. Double E G A R I B A L D I at gmail.com. Yeah, and uh, we'll get back. You know how we do it on the show. Thank you. Part for time, it has been with you on the Word Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, and my HRO Notebook on Amazon and on Robin Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube page at the same address. Yes, till we see you again. Bye for now.